Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Local Hour. Today I have special guest Tanai with me. Uh, Tanai is Head of Developer Relations over at Anitanayo and I'm so excited for today because he's going to show me around the platform. So hi Tanai, welcome. Thanks for hey. joining us today. Thanks for having uh, me. So how are you feeling today? Good, quite excited. Like uh, I saw your previous episode of uh, in it, Exploring in it in. So really great to be here and show you more amazing things about NATN. Definitely, I'm really excited. It's never quite the same when you're trying to step at a certain platform or tool alone. And now that I have the expert help, uh, really looking forward to it. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, what do you do? Um, Cool. So I'm Tane and I'm the head of developer relations at NATN. And I've been working on several exciting things recently, like helping our community automate a lot of really cool stuff and helping them really unleash their productivity, make their processes more efficient with NATN. And uh, prior to this, I've been involved in the world of open source and DevRel for almost six years now. And I've been involved with the Mozilla Foundation on several tracks and also have published books on some of my favorite topics like Firefox OS, uh, WebVR, and virtual assistants on Raspberry Pi. That's amazing. So how come you ended up working with local technologies? So how was that transition? What drew you into the local side of things? I think like this started off somewhere, I'd like to say beginning of this year. So um, I was really involved in my last position in databases and Python and DevOps side of things. And like I had not used JS or like HTML like since college time. So um, I had to build a website one day. And I was like, oh wow, like things have changed so much over the past years. And I learned about these low code or no code tools. Uh, so I was a bit skeptical at first, but uh, I discovered these huge array of tools which uh, don't need to know much about coding. Uh, but they still enable you to make great products. And uh, yeah, I was hooked since then. Um, and like, I think beginning of this year, I, um, like, uh, I heard about NA10. Uh, I met, uh, the founder and CEO Jan and I loved the product. So for me, it was, uh, sort of like, um, learning about the Lego of the world. So have you heard of the Lego programming language by any chance? Lego? No. I mean, I'm quite familiar with Lego, but not the programming language. So, so that's um... quite new for me as well. So, uh, they have these Mindstorm products and basically what the Lego programming language does is like they have pre-programmed blocks. So could be, hey robot, move five steps, turn right. And like you can connect these pre-programmed blocks and make the robot do something. And like I dabbled a bit in robotics in college and like I can understand how complex this whole process of making different servers move and so on is. And like this abstracted all the complexities of it. So like I really saw NA10 through that lens, uh, like there's pre-programmed blocks which can do so many different things. And like this ecosystem is community backed, it's constantly growing. And uh, yeah, the amount of things that you can do with that is limitless. So that's how um, I got introduced to NA10. And yeah, time went by so quickly. That's amazing. Oh, we have people in the chat. So hi, Lauren. Hi, Skywolf. And Unicarbine, who really wants to see a demo today and uh, is also quite convinced that this is the future. So uh, let's hear a little bit more about NATAN then. Uh, people are excited over here. <laughs> Sounds good. So NATAN is an extendable workflow automation tool. So it has a fair code distribution model, which means that NATAN will always have visible source code, uh, be available to self-host, and allow you to add your custom functions, logics, and apps. Um, so it has a, something called node-based approach, which makes it very versatile, enabling you to connect anything to everything. And our mission is basically to give everyone who uses a computer technical superpowers. That's great. So saying that it's extensible, so anyone could come and write their own nodes, right? So anyone could um, contribute to that platform. For sure, right? yeah. Um, I, I wrote my first node, I think, um a couple of weeks back and uh it's, it's a fun process like um we we're working more on documentation for like helping the community build nodes but it's it's really interesting it's all in typescript um 
it really is rewarding to sort of work on these nodes, um, almost sort of like packages in a sense, uh, if you're coming from a traditional programming background, it's like you're creating these uh, packages and like everybody else in the community can use that without knowing how to code. So yeah, like anybody can come in, um, they can create their own nodes. And yeah, we really, really welcome all the community contributions. It's always a lot of fun. That's amazing. I really do like platforms where um, extending it is so easy and so open. So excited about that. Cool. And yes, uh, indeed, Lauren, um, it's great to have the emphasis on the community because that is how you can build tools and platforms that last. So. Yeah. I think that community aspect is really what makes anything special. Um, well, one of the things, and I think like we have a really vibrant community. Like if you go to community.n8n.io, like we have a discourse forum there. And like, it's so nice to see is like anybody in the community is asking questions. Um, they get answered really fast and like help seeing the community members help each other. And also like when we are creating new nodes uh, at n8n, like we are always taking into account, like what has the community requested? So I think like, that's one of the things that resulted in the N810 in terms of its node offering as it stands right now, um, a really diverse feeling. Yes, I just highlighted that um, link to the community if anyone ha wants to look at it. Uh, <laughs> Battle on N810 versus Nodred. We'll do that another time, uh, but we definitely like that. So, um, Yes, I, I know that people are really excited to see a demo and can't wait to get to the actual platform. Uh, but before we get there, I would be really interested how you at Anitan use your own tool. Sure. So um, we actually do that in quite a couple of day, uh, different ways. Um, and something like a fun fact, like I don't think I've mentioned before is we also have um, like automation days. So like next one for us uh, in the company is on 17th December. So really excited about that as well. So we come here uh, as a team, uh, divide ourselves into groups and like work on either automating our existing business processes to make our uh, life more productive and efficient, but also like so that we don't have to do the repetitive tasks that we sometimes have to do. Um, so yeah, like a few highlights would be um, like personally for me, like from a DevRel perspective, what my team does is we manage the docs.n8n.io. And um, like when we started documenting like each and every node, um, there were, I think, somewhere around 130 nodes uh, in n8n. And today, I think there are somewhere around 222. Um, and like we started working on them. And what happens, like n8n team, uh, as you might know, is like they release nodes really fast. And something that might happen is, you know, we are working on the documentation, but something uh, comes up, we shift our attention there, or maybe somebody goes on a vacation. It's like, oh my God, which notes did we document and which notes did we not document? In the beginning, it was fine. It's like, okay, this haven't done yet. We let's document it. But as like the documentation size grew, it became difficult to manage like, okay, what do we need to do? So we decided let's use N810 to solve our issue. So what we built was a workflow um, and like how the documentation works is for the URL of every uh, node in the documentation, it's corresponding to the node name. So we call data from Strapi, which powers sort of the integrations page on NA10 uh, to see like, okay, what's the nodes that NA10 has in its current form? Uh, we get that, we sort of make HTTP requests, append that to docs.na10.io. And uh, if there's a 404, that means the node hasn't been documented yet. So that helps us, this runs via a cron trigger every Monday. So every Monday at 9 a.m. in the DevRel channel, we know like, okay, 98%, 99%, oops, we're dropping below 95%. Let's um, uh, document these nodes. So that helps us um, in that way. And like, we are also using it for a lot of different things. It's like, uh, we use Matter most internally. So we have a lot of slash commands as well. So, you know, for quickly uh, giving each other link to calls, like we use slash call command, which is powered by N8N. So, you know, it sends a link of a call to the other person. Um, we also have a slash SAS command to sort of 
give us metrics about what's going on in any 10 cloud. Um, yeah, lots of different things, uh, more to come. Sorry, you're muted. Thank you. Yes, half eight your answer. Mayo did you decided to just tune out. Um, yes, so you mentioned an eight on cloud. Um, will that be a hosted version? Uh, how does that work? And can people join that? Because I've seen some announcement recently. Yeah, you can go on n8n.cloud. So uh, it's an early access right now. It's a hosted offering from n8n and um, yeah, allows you to sort of, uh, gives you a lot of uh, benefits of uh, being a managed service as compared to self-hosting. So that's something people can go up to sign up for the early access. All right. Sounds good. Um, so today, would you like to run it locally? Let's do that. Right. Um, let me share my screen. Yes, uh, would you be okay with me sharing my screen and then you walking me through the interface, what's happening and how we could build something? Let's do it. All right, so I've got the terminal. Uh, and actually let me... I like to work with the website as well. So here we have an Ethan. Quite like your documentation. Thank you. <laughs> it's like nice and tidy, and I can find my way around it. So I'm guessing we're um, going with the NPM version. Yeah, let's do NPM. So there's two ways uh, of running it locally, three ways actually. You can run with NPX if you're just looking to try it out for the first time and you don't care about data being lost. NPM is another way. Um, and then final is Docker. All right. So, once I find the size for the terminal. I'm pretty sure I have it installed. Um, like the copy pasteable feature. Mm -hmm. Just in case we're updating. Perfect. Like we have a uh, like uh, updates coming in very often, so always good to have the latest version. Yes, I'm always surprised by how quickly you release new things. So congrats on that. Yeah, I'll pass my compliments to the team. Yeah. It's really great to see as well. Cool. So now that we have N810 installed, uh, there's two ways of running N810. So one could be just N810, VN10, N810, and it will start off the instance. And the second is starting it with tunnel. But this should really be used for testing and development purposes. So this uses local tunnel to expose your N810 instance to the internet. So that's useful. If you're using uh, trigger nodes, which we'll talk about, but if you want your instance to be discoverable in order to receive sort of updates from other services. So let's maybe go and start off with tunnel itself. So if we don't have to uh, right. later on. So we do n then start uh, space start space hyphen hyphen tunnel. All right. Perfect. Quick. Um, you can just click on O. Um, oh, yes. Forgot this one. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing that was a zero. No, it was an O. This is yeah. really neat. <laughs> Someone wanted to do Node comparison. In Node you cannot do that. You have to copy paste the link. So. Cool. Right, so um, we can go to the, yes. Two screens. <laughs> Perfect. Right. So this is the editor UI. Uh, that's what we call this uh, canvas. Um, 
And let's take a look at like what exists here for now. So we see like a big uh, play buttons like the start node. So start node is something that will always exist in your N8N in instance, uh, in your N8N workflows. Um, if you are using, um, let's say, running workflows manually, like the first node would need to be connected to the start node. But if you're using triggers, like let's say Telegram trigger or webhooks, um, you cannot delete a start node. So you know what I do it for uh, videos or screenshots, I just move it to the side so uh, that doesn't distract us. But that's the start node. And other than that, we have uh, nodes in n 8 So node is a unit of a uh, single unit in a workflow that can, that has superpowers essentially. Um, so let's maybe take a look at some of the nodes in n 8 So we could go right. and click on the top right um, with the with the plus button is. Yes. All right. So, here you can see like we have two different kinds of nodes. So one is the regular node. So regular nodes are essentially nodes which can talk to a service or some of them are core nodes for like conditional logic, like if, switch, um, and other ones talk to APIs like Vonage. Uh, so it can be used to send an SMS um, or you could connect to Active Campaign, for instance, uh, where it can do CRUD operations. And then we have the trigger nodes. So trigger nodes essentially can start off a workflow depending on, let's say, you have an active campaign trigger. So every time, let's say, a deal gets created, um, it will start a workflow. Or uh, we also have some other things like, you know, if a card gets moved in Asana, that will trigger a workflow. Or let's say you have a cron node and you want something like me, like which runs every Monday or like every five minutes or something, uh, you can set it using the cron node. So like, these are the two different kinds of uh, nodes in NADM. Hopefully you don't mind, but it reminds me of Zapier because they kind of have a similar uh, setup with trigger nodes and then action nodes. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing in uh, that setup action would be the regular. Um, yeah, so regular nodes would be used to like do something within the workflow, like do something with the data, maybe push it to Airtable or um, like maybe change something in a certain service, like some, change something in Agile CRM. So yeah, Shen, for services, like sometimes it happens, like you might want to use some service that has a REST API but doesn't have a node for anything yet. So in those cases, like we also have the HTTP request node. Um, so that allows you to send HTTP requests to a web page, to a REST API. And um, yeah, so that's, that's like a very neat tool that sort of comes into the extensibility part of N810. Um, yeah. I believe we looked at it the first time around. Uh, it was a really nice interface for HTTP requests. Yeah. Shall we um, run something on the HTTP request node? Definitely. Um, How about something without an authentication um, so that it's quick? Um, what I, I, I like to use the Cocktail DB API. What do you think? Haven't done it. Sounds fun. So let's do it. Cool. Let's, let's look for a uh, Cocktail DB API. What I like about it for demos is like uh, you don't have to enter authentication, like or get a key. So it's it's really quick to test out. Uh, is this the one? Yes, that should be the one. And then we can search for random. Um, I think it's a bit down. No, I think it's it's going to look for the drinks. Um, so oh, yes. with the command F on the previous page. Oh, there Random we go. cocktail. Yes. So. So we paste it in the URL. All right. And that's it. We uh, should be a get request, and we 
uh, click on the execute node on the top right. Oh, look and, at that. Yeah, so it you can see data in, uh, in a table format um, or, or in the JSON format. It makes sense for some uh, outputs to take a look in the table format, but here, like, due to the nature of the output, uh, makes more sense to probably take a look at the JSON format. So yeah, like, uh, it's an API endpoint, and uh, we don't have a node for the Cocktail DB API. So you know, you can use HTTP request if you wanna send uh, your team a cocktail recipe every Friday evening. So that's something. Uh, that can be done uh, with the HTTP request. And similarly, like you could also uh, make a request, authenticated request even to uh, other services as well. Yeah, definitely. Next one. Um, how about the rest of the interface? What do I have in the left-hand side in here? So looking from the top, like we have these three, yeah. So new one, uh, the new option opens up a new workflow open for opening the existing workflows, save as for saving workflows. That's um, important if you want to activate the workflow, which we'll talk about later. Um, download, what it does is it downloads your workflow so that you can send it to other people. And um, if you download the workflow now, for instance, it will have two nodes, um, the start node uh, and the HTTP request node. And all the workflows in N8N are basically in JSON format. So, yeah. all right. And um, let's say um, I send you a workflow. Uh, you can just copy the JSON and paste it on your N8N uh, editor UI, and it will just recreate the workflow for you. So that's another one of the uh, good features of N8N is like you can copy paste workflows uh, because they're essentially JSON. Um, it's easy to share. Um, make sure that you're not logged into uh, a platform and like you are able to see like what's going on underneath the hood as well with the source code visible on GitHub, but also like being able to really own your workflow and data. That's definitely a good point. So I didn't have credentials in here, but um, had I had credentials, does it export those or? No, so it would on the, um, export the name of the credentials. Let's say uh, you add an API key with name, let's say uh, one inch demo, and it would just export with the name of one inch demo. Wouldn't export the API keys itself. I see. All right. Uh, let's go back into the editor. Um, credentials, yes. So I'm so guessing this is where I have any, yeah. And, and then, then have executions. So like we can take a look at the previous execution. So I'm assuming this is from the previous live stream. <laughs> exactly. <Okay>. Success. <laughs> so yeah, like it gives you information of uh, depending on what your settings for the workflow are, uh, the manual executions. Uh, it also saves if some errors happen so you can take a look at the data. So yeah, if you click on that button, it will, uh, yeah, I think we can do that, it's okay. Uh, it, it will show you your previous workflow. And if you click on the HTTP request, um, it will also show the data you had the last time there. Uh, click once. Uh, double Twice. click. Double click, yes. So this is like really useful for debugging in case like API errors are encountered or maybe uh, the workflow doesn't execute correctly for some reason. So you can really go back to execution and see like, okay, what was the issue there? And um, you can decide like if you want to save executions for all the manual executions, for all the uh, automatic executions or production executions, maybe only if an error occurred. So you have control over like what sort of logs you want to save. That's really handy, handy looking through that. And then I guess this is, yes, documentation for workflows and about any time. Yeah. Right. And the workflows uh, link there is quite useful as well because um, since like all the workflows are JSON in format, what happens is a lot of community members share the things that they have built on that page. So 
if you're new to NA10 and you're wondering what should I automate first, like that's a great page to go into and uh, just take a look at what the community members have been doing. Um, you can just copy paste the workflows from there and yeah, like run them on your own system. Definitely, I first uh, had to look at this uh, when trying to figure out the platform and there are loads of integrations. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that, one with one edge. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> So how about we build something today? Let's do it. So you told me something about using and um, um, creating a new so, workflow, right? Yeah. Yes, switch. All right. So that's a clean workflow with a start button and nothing else. Yes. Um, in case someone wants to follow along, um, what would they need for what we're building today? So let's build, and like this is a workflow actually one of our community members built. So like, it's just really inspiring because these are sort of, uh, it's almost like a sort of low code product. Um, and like the community member in question doesn't have a programming background, but like she was able to build this whole Telegram bot. So essentially there's a bot, um, you take a picture of a receipt. Um, it takes that, passes it to a different node uh, where it parses the information using the Mindy API um, and saves it to Airtable or spreadsheet, what have you, and maybe sends an SMS to, let's say, the financial person responsible in the company uh, using Vonage. Um, so I think like that's a, that could be a workflow that we can build today. Sounds good. So how would I get started then? Um, so first of all, we'd need uh, the image in question. So uh, we'd need to receive image of a receipt. I, awesome, you have a receipt ready. That's I prepared. Oh, yes, this is a credit card thingy, which we are not. Yes. Uh, yes, today's dinner. <laughs> Perfect. So. First of all, we'd need to receive the image data into the workflow. So since we are building a Telegram bot, uh, this image in question would be sent using the Telegram bot. So we need the workflow to start every time an image is sent to it. So we would uh, first go to Telegram and create a bot there. All right. Where is it hiding? There we go. So we will look for bot father. <laughs> uh, where would I look for that? In the search bar. Yeah. So we can search okay. for bot father. Bot father. Yes, the first one. Right. Perfect. So yeah, let's let's uh, click on the start button. Let me see if I can make this oops bigger. I really like the nameplate that they did with Bot Father with the <laughs> image. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> cool. So Perfect. Okay. So. Once you click on start, it gives you a ton of options um, about different things. So we see uh, you can type it. You can also click on the slash new bot option on the, at the near the top. So it creates a new bot. And we're going to name it. So what are we going to call our bot today? That's, that's one of the toughest parts of building a workflow. In the <laughs> Actual execution is says easy, but like, what do we call the bot? <laughs> the low bot hour. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, it's supposed to be one continuous string, right? Um, I I'm, I don't think so. It could be because um, we are going to give it a username later on, so that needs to be a continuous string. But here, I think it can be uh, can have a space probably. 
Let's try. I'm not sure. That's right. I'm not funny, but at least it's British humor. Perfect. That worked out. And then we need to give it a username which ends in bot. So that would need to be one continuous string. Oh, and it doesn't have to be all low, low, lowercase, so. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the second toughest part. The local error bot is already taken. How dare you? That's fine <laughs> for me. Any then? No. Code bot. I wonder if I created that during one of my experiments. I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> oh, perfect. Congratulations. Awesome. Um, so two things here are worth noting is it says done. Congratulations. Uh, you have your new bot. You can find it at, it gives you a link. We'll click on it in a bit. And then in the second paragraph, you see it says, use this token to access the HTTP API. So you can also click on it. Uh, it will auto copy. Oh, um, perfect. That's nice. And uh, then we can click on the link for the bot. So that would be this one. Yeah. Perfect. OK, so we'll let it be for now and get back to anything. And we're back. Perfect. So we'll add a trigger node, because that's a node that's going to kick off this workflow. So we look for Telegram here. And here we have the Telegram trigger. Perfect. So. First of all, we need to authenticate it. So we'll uh, click on the credentials, yes, and create a new credential. So it's a name of the credential. So a lot of times I'm building a lot of different bots. So just like oh, this is the low code bot or uh, maybe the expense receipts bot. Um, so this is just a, basically a name for you to help you find uh, which credential you use in case you end up having uh, lots of different ones. Uh, perfect. And then we copy the access token that we uh, took from Botfather. And we click on Create. Uh, for nodes with access? So what this does is um, it talks about which nodes in the workflow should have access to these credentials. So you'd have to, if you create credentials manually through the sidebar that we saw earlier, you'd have to use this part. But generally, if you are creating credentials uh, from within a node, you don't need to uh, manually add them. So you can just uh, create, uh, click on the Create button, and uh, this will include it. Perfect. And now, for we need to tell when should it actually run. So for updates, if you click on uh, Select, it has lots of different options. Um, let's put star. Uh, let's have it run every time somebody sends something to it. OK. Um, and another thing is um, it would take on all the information. So how Telegram works is if we send an image to it, um, it's going to give us a reference ID. So it's not going to send the image itself. So we'll have to add an additional option for that. So if you go to additional fields and click on add field, and download images and files. And we're going to turn it to on because we need the image for uh, parsing data out of it. All right. Perfect. So our node is configured, but we cannot run it yet because it's a trigger node. It's going to use webhook URLs. So first, we are going to have to uh, save the workflow. Can I just click out of it? or? Yeah, yeah you can. OK. And then I'm guessing it's command save or save as. Yeah, save as. And then we can give our workflow name. And then we save it. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Um, so, all right. Uh, now, this is saved. 
Now let's go into the Telegram node again, just to uh, see once we send data inside. So there's two ways of running workflows uh, with a trigger node. So one is like manual. So if you click on uh, execute node, what will happen is it will open the webhook and it will run for 120 seconds. So we need to, while we are creating a workflow, run it in test mode, so to speak, because um, once we finish creating the workflow, we are going to activate it so that every time something comes, it's going to process it automatically. But we now we need to click it manually because in production, the data that passes through the uh, workflow is not visible in the editor UI. Um, as opposed to if we are running on tests and click on execute node and we send something, the data is going to be visible, which is crucial for us to sort of model uh, you know, uh, expressions um, and things like uh, how should I return back the data. So we are going to run it in test mode while we are building the workflow. And then at the end, we are going to uh, activate it so that it runs in production. So let's click on execute node um, and send our Telegram bot an image. Uh, right. Let me quickly move the image. You have 120 seconds after you click on execute node. <laughs> I know. That's why I didn't click it. Because uh, first. But don't stress out. I can always uh, click it again. Yeah. So photos. So one of the things we are going to notice, like when we click on execute node, is because you're going to be clicking on the start button, which sends slash start command to the bot. That's going to be the first expected uh, result. But we'll click on it again to sort of get the image that comes after it. So. Right, I've got my image. I've got Telegram ready, so we can execute node. Yes. And now, over to the Telegram. So um, if you click start. on Start, yeah. So this is going to be the first message that actually it receives. So let's go back to NA10. Um, and this is expected because oh. you know it sends slash start. So that's going to be the first output. So we see like the chat ID, and it's going to be crucial later on to have this ID because we are going to send the pass information back to Telegram. Um, so this, yes. Cool. Uh, perfect. So this gives the information. So now we can actually uh, send the image through to Telegram bot. And like, if you are um, generally like uh, using it later on, a uh, neat feature of, because um, Telegram is also available as uh, app on Android and like iOS, is uh, you can like access the camera directly there, take a picture and send it. But we didn't click on the execute node. Oh, I but thought I was on. Probably work. I thought I was within the 120 seconds, so it would come through. Or does but it no, only so it will stop? One? It will stop after the first one because this oh, is see. only for development. Uh, yes. Perfect. So this worked out. So now we have files. Uh, we sent in. Receipt, and if we go back to NA10. Uh, no, I have to send it. Oh, no, you don't have to send it again. It has the data. Oh. Yes, yeah. okay. So we have a JSON. Now, actually, we want to see the image, so we can go to the binary tab on the top. Um, so now we see, along with JSON and table, binary is available. And if you click on Show Binary Data, we have our receipt here. All right. Perfect. So now we actually can trigger the workflow so that it does uh, get started every time we send it a message. Now what we need to do is um, parse the data out of the receipt, I guess. So for that, we'll use a service called uh, Mindy. So for start, you can also take it and move it to some uh, corner like uh, I sometimes do with things in a closet. You know, The closet you never open because it's going to fall off. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, like, it, it doesn't distract us now. So of the chart. 
off the chat. <laughs> the only feedback I'm gonna give based on the first time I've ever used it, I didn't exactly realize that it was an infinite canvas. So I kept importing certain nodes yeah. over and over again and not realizing that it was already there because it was out of my view. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So now for adding a new node, uh, a tip is that if you click on the node uh, that you want to connect it to, um, let, let's say if you click on Telegram trigger, um, no, no, the one already on the canvas. Yes. So that it's selected. Um, just a single click, you can go back into the editor UI. So we can click on the cross button. Uh, close, yes. Uh, and now press on the plus. Um, so we see like it's sort of highlighted. Uh, um, and now if we add the next node, what will happen is it's going to uh, come into the canvas, but it will automatically be connected to the previous node. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. I haven't realized that. Another shortcut is you could press tab instead of having to click on plus. So um, that will open up this menu. So yeah, you can try that out. Here we go. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Perfect. So we look for Mindy, um, M I N D W. Yes. Is he Mindy, I suppose? Yes. Perfect. So what Mindy does is it has a couple of different neat APIs. Um, like it has APIs for um, parsing invoices, for parsing receipts. So we're going to use the receipt API. Uh, and we'll have to get an API key. So they have, I think, a good amount of um, free API calls per month. So we can get, go on their website uh, and get an API key. So a neat feature I can show you, uh, Julia, is um, if you click on the Mindy receipt API under credentials, um, and click on create new. So I think a lot authentication is part of a lot of services and it's sometimes confusing with all these different uh, design patterns to find out like, well, how do I actually get the credentials, API keys or whatnot, is you can click on the open credential docs on the top right. And we have documented like for all our nodes, how they can find the API key. It tells you the prerequisites and also like the steps of getting a key. So we can follow this. It also, like, yes, clicking on this would show you documentation about the node itself. Oops. Oh, yeah, that's a bug you're trying to fix. Uh, if you refresh it, it would work. Um, refresh it. OK. So JavaScript. <laughs> yes. Moving on. <laughs> uh, right. Sure. So, so we create and have to create a Mindy account um, and get the API free API key. So I'm guessing I'm getting started. Uh, right. So I'm quickly going to take my uh, screen off screen until I sort this out. And while I'm doing this and being extremely entertaining, um, maybe you could tell us something about your favorite use case you've seen so far, like something that people did with your platform and you were surprised about the use case. Oh, there's so many. Like, um, honestly, the best part of my job is like talking to the community members and seeing what things they have been building. Because just like you could see, look at NA10 and it's like so many different nodes. There's a node for, let's say, Salesforce uh, Active Campaign, which goes more on the sort of MarTech side of things. Uh, but then you also have messaging nodes like um, Vonage, Twilio, um, Telegram, and so on. But on the other hand, you also have like nodes like database nodes and Apache Kafka. So it's like a lot of diverse nodes. So it's always interesting to see what the community is doing with NA10. Um, I think some of the favorite ones is there's a company in Sweden, um, and like we have a few of these interviews posted on our blog on Medium as well. Um, and uh, what they are doing is using N8N in ships for automating some of the processes there, which is like extremely interesting. So they can't use a uh, hosted uh, version on cloud because you know ships go through unpredictable routes in terms of are they going to get network connection or not. So they're self-hosting N8N and using it for that purposes. 
Um, we recently talked to a company called Goomer based out of Brazil. So I think they were working in the catering uh, side of things, uh, but like COVID impacted their business and they pivoted to sort of a delivery app. And uh, they have been using more than 280 workflows for um, automating a lot of their operational stuff. So that was really interesting to see. Like we have an uh, interview about this posted on our website and their workflows are huge. And it's so cool to see like they have pretty much created like very complex backend just using nodes. So that's definitely very interesting to see. Like um, I think like some of these are some of my favorite use cases. Um, and like we're also looking always at like how to improve that. So as you mentioned, like we are releasing rather quickly, like every week. Um, and like we, uh, if somebody follows like our Twitter account, they see we have a neat graphic uh, with the new nodes okay. picture, like uh, some text here and there. So we thought this is something we have to do every week. Uh, you know, somebody has to find out, okay, these are the new nodes. Some person has to update the change log. Somebody has to make the graphic. It's like too many moving parts involved. So how do we streamline that? So we decided, okay, like one person should be able to do all these things, make the announcement, uh, release the change log, create the graphic. But uh, creating graphics is really hard. Uh, so we are thinking about how to proceduralize this. So we have been looking at, we have an edit image node. Uh, we also have a Banabia node. So we can sort of template things uh, and like rather dynamically create or automatically create every time we have a new release. So that's gonna be my, my and my teammates project in our hackathon, which we're calling Hackmation coming in this December. So really excited about that too. So I think like um, this is a very interesting use case as well, because um, I've been talking with one of the community members uh, based out of India. So what he's doing is he leads uh, mental health workshops and a lot of couple of different uh, consulting projects as well. So people train with him, but they often request for a certificate um, at the completion. So like he uh, has a lot of people joining in his workshops and it's a bit of a work to create all these certificates. So he created a template in Banabia, gets the data of people from Google Sheets, generates all the template uh, certificates automatically and emails it to them. So the thing he used to do like manually for hundreds, 200 of people, like now he can click a button and it's done. So like, that's great. And like he also working in this different space that gave me the different perspective as well that I didn't think of before. Like, yes, this is about empowerment. This is about efficiency. This is about productivity. But this is also about mental health because uh, if you look at like burnout and things like that, a lot of these are workplace phenomenon. And I think what promotes these things is working on the same repetitive tasks again and again. So if we can automate a lot of these things, it does give us a lot of peace of mind as well. So like I was blown away by this, like that's a great thinking uh, way of thinking about automation that I never thought about before. So yeah. I love that point where it's mental health and repetitive tasks being a cause yeah. for that. Like I couldn't agree more. Also, I'm really excited to see how the project goes. So hopefully we can see that at some point. Because yes, um, I've been having so. conversations about uh, generating images automatically. I didn't yeah. quite have a solution for that. So maybe you will have one to share with me. <laughs> cool, for sure, for sure. And for those of you interested, we also have a blog post on our blog, which is which actually uses the cocktail DB API that we just used. That also provides an image of the cocktail itself. So that tutorial uses Panabeer to sort of create recipe cards with the instruction of how to create the cocktail, what's the ingredients, a picture of the cocktail as well. So um, if you're interested in image generation, that's a great place to start. That sounds like fun. Uh, do you have a link towards uh, these tutorials that I could highlight? Just sure. feel free to um, drop it in the chat and uh, we can put that on screen. Good, so this is a Medium blog. I shared the link. And for uh, image generation, this is a blog post uh, that we published a while back on how to automate designs. So we have banner beer, which can do that with templates, but we also have an edit image node in case um, uh, the throughput of the images uh, you have is huge uh, and 
maybe a service like Banavir gets to cost you, you can use the edit image node, which is uh, uh, using a Node.js package underneath. So it's also self-hosted. So if you want to keep all the data to yourself, that can help. I love it how we have a chat in parallel about the developer education platform, which we are really excited to have live. So it's fun. It's awesome. But yes, yeah, so uh, people can find you on Medium uh, under Anathan IO. I'll also put those in the description box. And in the meantime, I have an account ready. So hopefully we can continue where we left off. Perfect. Thank you so much. Cool. So today we are going to, and like there's a lot of different endpoints, like we haven't implemented resources or operations for all of them. Uh, but yeah, like if there's a use case, maybe let's say for license plates that you find interesting, uh, if there's a feature that's missing, always feel free to come to community.nitn.io and open a feature request. Uh, generally, for the things that we already have a note for, adding new operations or resources isn't uh, that complicated. So the team moves quite fast on that. So yeah, um, just wanted to put that out there. So today we are going to be using the expense receipts. So Let's click on this, uh, try out. And under API keys on the left pane near the bottom, click on add API key. So Try I am anything. giving it a name. It can be anything. Um, I usually end up calling all of them any then. I should have a better naming scheme, but yeah. <laughs> that makes more sense. Perfect. And um, we can copy yeah. this and then head back to our workflow. And so it's already added, and add key would trigger another. Yeah, I, I, I think so, yeah. All right. So now we're going back to here. Can, yeah. Can and then the API, API key. Perfect. And give it a name. and create, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So let's chat a bit about this node. So we see like we have resource. So resource is sort of the high level um, availability in terms of what can this node no do. So for instance, if you go into a node like active campaign, the resources would be something like company, uh, deal, um, uh, person, and so on. And the operations would delve a bit more deeper in terms of add a person, delete a person, add a company, delete a company, you know. Um, so receipt is the one that we choose to use here, uh, the default. And operation, I think we just have one, is uh, predict. So how NATN handles data is like the binary property is going to remain data because um, it's the default in NATN. And uh, from the previous node, it's going to get this information um, yeah, so what we can do is click on execute node and it should pass some details out of your receipt. Perfect, how accurate is the information? Well, date, currency, locale, and uh, can't see the time. Yes, time is correct. And total is correct. Perfect. Not sure how didn't recognize the merchant because <laughs> that was the biggest piece of information. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's pretty correct. Perfect. So yeah, like now it passes, and like it's, it's I really like Mindy's API because um, like if you go on our blog, there's a blog post about like how to use this API as well, um, and the uh, receipt that I used was like very crinkly because. Um, yeah, uh, didn't have a better one. I just put it in my pocket. So like, uh, it also recognizes data from that kind of receipt. So that's great too. Um, right. So we have um, bought. Basically, we send it uh, an image of a receipt, and it parses data out of it. What we can do next is maybe we can save it to 
of maybe we can first send a message to Telegram saying like, hey, your receipt has been parsed. That's the data we got out of it. Right, let's do that. Um, I'm guessing I need another Telegram node for that. Yeah. And I see Mindy node is already selected. Perfect. I mean, if it's not selected, you can always uh, use. Uh, I can just click and drag, right? Yeah, yeah. That's also another way to open the create node panel, uh, clicking and dragging the dot at the end of a node. OK, we'll do that for the next one. Remind Perfect. me. <laughs> so now hit Telegram API. So since you've already entered one, you can just use that. And this corresponds to your bot, so that's perfect. Chat ID. So since this would be a dynamic piece of information, because uh, right now just you're using the uh, Telegram bot, but maybe you share on the link with me later, and I can send a receipt image from my phone. So I would want it to send the details back to me, not to a same person every time, which yes. could be the use case as well. But um, so this, since this would be a dynamic piece of information dependent on who sent the message, uh, we would need to add expression to this. So expression is useful. It's almost like something that changes with every execution of the workflow. Um, yeah, it can have dynamic values. So to add, you can add expression to any field in any 10. And for that, you go to the field. Next to it, there's a gear symbol. Uh, we click on that and select add expression. So would this be the chat ID? That would be the chat ID, yeah. OK. So now let's take a look at the screen. So we enter expressions here. Uh, whatever we enter, then we have the result uh, of that in the bottom. OK, so let's take a look at just the expression now. Um, so expressions can be selected with the left panel, which we'll do in a second. But expressions are basically uh, could also be JavaScript, uh, JavaScript code in the middle of curly braces. So Let's let's try that once. Uh, let's uh, do two curly braces um, and close them as well. Okay, so in the middle, let's maybe add uh, one plus two. So this evaluates anything that's JavaScript. So you can enter dates or um, and like we also in the documentation in the reference section. So if you are not super familiar with JavaScript, um, we have a ton of uh, useful expressions. Like if you want to know the day of the week it is right now, the time and so on. OK, so let's get rid of this. Great. So anything yeah. JavaScript could go yes. in there. Right. So, Am I getting rid of the br uh, yes, brackets yes. as well? Yes. So. Now what we can do is we can select output from the previous nodes. And that's like one of the important parts. We need to have data from the previous nodes for them to show their output data to be able to model things. Um, that's why like we are using it in test format and not in production while building it. So we'll click on the nodes. Um, and Telegram Tigger sent us the chat ID. So we'll click on that output data. Um, and we we'll look for the JSON data. And we scroll down. Uh, we click on message, um, chat, and ID. Is there a way to make it wider? No. Um, I think it's it's uh it's because we zoomed in. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're so, looking for the ID, right? Yes. Can we oh. scroll down a bit? I'm not hundred percent sure. I think that's correct. Yeah, that should be okay. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Um, so now we have the chat ID and we can close this. Um, and like this would vary, like now this would send information with the Telegram node back to the person depending on who sent, who triggered the workflow. So, so there is a chat yeah. ID associated for each sender. Yes. So I would have a chat ID and you would have a chat ID with the bot. Yeah. All right. Exactly. So I can close this right now. Yes. And text, um, since this would also be a dynamic piece of information, depending on the receipt that we uploaded, we'd also add expressions. So um, let's, let's make it simple for now. Let's say total bill is, we can just write that there, um, or, uh, amount, yeah. And then we can add, and I'll let you select it uh, by yourself 
uh, right now. <laughs> so I'm looking at Mindy uh, output data and the total. Yes, perfect. And, and then we can also like add that the currency as well. Perfect. Yeah, sounds good. I think we can right. add a uh, space between the two expressions. Yep, perfect. Yeah, uh, let's start off with this. Uh, this We can add all the information eventually, uh, but I think that's a great start. Perfect. Yeah. And like then you. we click on execute node uh, after going inside. And um, there's a lot of different options in the node. Uh, yeah. And right. if you open your Telegram, account um yeah yes you got a message so back. shall we try it um end to end now in terms of um we just click on execute workflow at the beginning so we upload a receipt and uh yeah get data um i'll share a link with you so i have a receipt here um that we can use or um, you said that um there is a way for both of us to uh, send it a receipt and get back in. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's check it. Shall we do it that way? Yeah, we could. Um, what do you need me to so, share with you for that? Um, you'd need to share with me the Telegram bot URL um, or the name of the bot, uh, you know, at the rate. Right, so that's, that's in Telegram, right? Yes. Also, you can go to but for the, uh, or yeah, you can you can give it from here uh, by clicking info. Um, and yeah, the username. Um, oh, yes, this one. Yes. Come on. There we go. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is just downloading a receipt from the post that we have on Medium because uh, I'm not sure if I have any receipts on hand. Um, then on Telegram, I'm searching for the bot that was just made. On the Turns out I have another one. So. Cool. So you need to click on Execute Workflow now since it's not in production mode. Um, Um, yeah, from uh, we can go outside. Outside doesn't. Um, yeah, we can click on the cross button. Yep, and click on the execute workflow uh, button. Oh, button. like the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I think are you ready or? Uh... Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So it should send slash start. So yep, it didn't work because I sent slash start. Uh, let's execute it again, and now I'll send it the image. Perfect. So. And um, it's uploading. And I got a cool. So let's take a look at um, the image that we received. Oh, it seems like no. So this took mine again. So let's take hmm. a look at Telegram node. I wonder what we did wrong there. So the second one? Yeah, uh, yes. All right. So, so um, I'm not. Um, what we'll do is like uh, let's go to the Telegram trigger node. Um, we can click on cross. Yes. So it still got data from you. Um, I wonder why. So let's execute it again. The workflow maybe. Uh, the whole workflow. Yeah. Okay. Should it be active or are we just? Oh, no, no, because that will turn the workflow in production. Okay. okay, so it says waiting for the webhook call. Oh, I got something. Oh, I got it. Uh, if you open the Telegram trigger now. So. Yes, that's so you see you. the data from me. Um, and we look at the binary uh, tab to see like what kind of data was there. So, yeah, that's a receipt as well. Uh, I've out the credit card information there. Um, and, 
uh, we can now check out the next node. Uh, we can click on the cross. Um, and uh, we open the Mindy node just to see like what kind of data it passed out. So category miscellaneous. OK, sure. <laughs> the data is correct. Amount hero. Uh, Locale is German. Uh, merchant Raver. Perfect. So it's, it's interesting. Like it picked up also the taxes from this uh, receipt that I entered. Uh, it's interesting to note that time is correct and the amount is correct as well. So yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's great. That's interesting. I don't think we have those things for Dewey. No. I don't have anything like that in the receipt. OK. Perfect. Um, so yeah, and it sent me a message. And um, I'll open up Telegram just to take a quick look. And it says, uh, yeah, total bill is 2.6 euro. Perfect. Um, one other thing we can do, um, depending on how we are uh, going on time, is we could also add this all this data to uh, Google Sheets or Airtable. Yes. In the meantime, we have a question in there. Um, can this do regex? Yes. Um, so you could use regular expression, regular expressions in expressions. I mean, anything in JS can be used within expressions. But also, we have a function node. So uh, in function node, you can execute JavaScript code. So let's say um, you want to do some uh, sorting based on regular expressions or um, you want to transform the data into some other format depending on uh, you know the service you're sending it to. Uh, and let's say and it doesn't have that functionality, you can use uh, the function node to write JavaScript code there. So if you're trying out the function node, I uh, would really recommend checking out our documentation in that. It is JavaScript, but uh, the data structure is a bit particular because uh, it reflects how the code of N8N is written internally. So like, for example, the function node would always return an array of items, which would have a JSON, an object called JSON, and everything inside would uh, everything would be inside, and so on. All right, thank you. So now I'm removing this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, what did I do in there? <laughs> I, I think because uh, we had Mindy node clicked, so it just connected that. So we can just click on the delete uh, the trash bin. And, and now can, I think yes. For, eh. Just to the small bar, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So next step would be putting it into a database. Yeah, uh, we could use Airtable. Uh, what do you think? Yes, Airtable sounds good. Actually, I've been meaning to do more things with Airtable. Cool. So first of all, uh, some changes. Um, what we need to do is um, so a couple of things. Uh, so if you open up the Telegram node, um, so uh, what you notice is this has a very particular message, um, like, and this is the output from Telegram. Like, yes, we sent the data that you wanted us to send to this chat ID. Everything worked out and some more information like which chat I did send to was the name of the person and so on. And you might notice that it does not have in the workflow the data that was sent by the previous node. So yes. if we add an Airtable node in front of it, this is the data that will get appended. So we want to change that. So we'll add a set node first, and we can chat a bit about it as well. So we'll add a set node here. Uh, before the Telegram node, right? Oh no, after the after the Telegram node. After the Telegram node, okay. You could also connect multiple nodes to Mindy node as well, but we can do it linear as well. Uh, if you want to send the message first and then add it to a table for some reason, so it's called the set node. Yes. So set node, uh, as its name mentions, it can set a value or it can change a already set value. And the beauty of this node, and like it could be, uh, you can assign a key value pair. Um, and the beauty of this node is we can turn on the keep only set button at the top, and only the data that we set in this node will go forward, which is very useful if we are appending data to, uh, let's say, Airtable, Google Sheets, any database nodes, so that like 
the data going through the workflow is clean. So we open, yes, uh, click on, uh, keep on the set. So the Telegram data that we got like success, okay, we don't need that data right now in the workflow, so we can get rid of it. So first of all, we'll uh, click on add value. Um, and let's add a string. So it could be a Boolean value, number or string. So I think for us, it's useful. Uh, so let's just call it small name uh, or capitalized name, however you prefer. Uh, so this is very similar to, as you might think of key value pairs or uh, uh, JSON objects as well. Uh, essentially everything is uh, going through in a JSON format in a net and workflows. All right, and we are trying to set the value of... Let's add a name so that we know uh, if Julie entered uh, some value into this whole system or Tane entered it or maybe somebody else. Uh, so we let's call it name. So name is name, yeah, perfect. And the value, again, this would be a dynamic object. So we add an expression here. So this would be data, yeah. Yeah. Telegram okay. trigger and output data JSON message chat. And let's do just the first name. That's perfect. And we can close this and uh, let's add another value, which could be the total amount. Just it could be a number this Still time. Still string. Sure. I think or, really depends on how you want to store data in your table. Or what you're doing with it. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, let's call it amount and again an expression and this time oh uh, so this always has a zero if you are selecting a number so you might want to delete that um, oh in there yes yeah. okay so this is gonna come from mindy yes. and it's going to be the total yes perfect so now if you click on execute node, you see like the workflow data is limited to the amount that was passed and it tells you from whom this came, the from whom the receipt came. Cool, now that we have done so that, sorry. Is this like filtering it out and preparing it before it's going into the um, database or yes. do I at this point still have the information? So you can, like while the workflow data at this point is just the amount and name, you can always at a future point, like let's say you have another stuff going on after the Airtable node, you can always refer back to data from specific nodes. Like, okay, what no. did Mindy say that? So this is mostly about keeping the uh, workflow data clean because, um, and I'll show you uh, why that makes sense in Airtable node. You don't have to do that necessarily. But in this specific case, we do because uh, the Telegram node overrode the data that came from Mindy. Okay, okay. that makes so, sense then. thank you. Perfect. And yeah, we can then add an Airtable node. All right. Um, how do I pan? Um, on the bottom left, uh, you can zoom back in. Yeah. I was trying to move it around. But no. um, okay. um, you are on Firefox, right? Uh, I think three finger drag. Oh, or two finger drag. Oh, two, two finger drag should do. No? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, there's the whole interface. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So and adding an air table node. Yes. Um, so first of all, uh, credentials. So we need an API key. Okay. So I don't remember exactly how to get the API key. So we can click on the open credential docs. Uh, that should help us. Good call. So let's see using access token. So open air table dashboard. Click on user. Oh, you have a nice uh, little GIF. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's always good. So user, account, and generate API key. So I'm going to go do that. Since so I'm not sure line. which one that is, I'm going to quickly remove that. Mm -hmm. um, We'd also need to prepare a table because the heading names need to be same. Um, so after authentication, we need to prepare a table in Airtable where the data will get added. And um, But let's do credentials first. All right. So I've got an API key. And we're back. So credentials name. Um, and create, I suppose. Yes. OK. okay. Um, so we'd be appending data. So that would go into append. And we need a base ID. So now if you look at the bottom of uh, the N810 workflow, there's, I think it's cutting off in the screen right now, but there's a link to, uh, at the yeah, if you go, yeah, open a table documentation. So yeah, it's, uh, N810 is essentially encapsulating how the different APIs work. So the API asks for a base ID, so we have to provide it a base ID. So um, I think we have added an FAQ here. If we go all the way to the bottom, perhaps, or um, one more step down. Yeah, this is so. Yes. Yeah, so enter the base ID in the base ID field, and I we head over to this page mentioned here, uh, to the API page. Uh, yeah, and you select the base for which uh, where you want to add all this data. Um, so maybe we want to create a base first. Yes. Perfect. Not sure why I'm in this view. Um, OK. So um, we are adding a base. Uh, start from scratch. We'll do start from scratch. Um, How nice it says an eight on the icon. <laughs> Sorry? Um, I like how they uh, put these things on the icon as well, based on what you named them. <laughs> yes. Um, and your brand color is orange, I suppose. Or red? Yeah. We'll go with orange. OK. So. Cool. Uh, I suppose we can enter this now. So yes. it's called table one at the top. We can let it be. I think that's fine. Um, so the name that's coming in is small. So we could either change it here, or we could change it in the workflow, depending on the preference. Um, perfect. Then there's an amount. Um, and then again, depending on what's your use case, or like what's the format you're sending data in, uh, you'd have to set a field type. Um, maybe it's a number. I'm not sure to if search for it. OK. Yeah, that's fine. I'm sure there is a currency, but we'll go with number for now. Cool. And then we can um, delete the other ones. Um, not because exactly sure how we... to delete it. Um, so if we click on the small arrow, oh, yeah, yes, perfect. Perfect, because if we had these, um, Airtable would error out and say, like, hey, you didn't provide data for these two fields. Um, so yeah, OK, we there's three already empty records. We can delete them, uh, can keep them if you want. Uh, but yeah. 
Yeah, I remember last time when I tried it, there were some issues with the empty records. I, I trust there shouldn't be, but uh, it's okay. It wasn't so, any kind of related. Ah, okay. Cool. So it looks like we are set. Back to NA10 now? Yeah. Um, let's go back to the documentation. We still need to get the base ID. Oh, right. So base ID. Um, I think it was in the other page. Um, I think it's uh, atable.com slash API. Cool. I think we can select our base here. Um, since we are on live stream, would recommend uh, deleting the ID of the base uh, later on because yes, this would yeah, cool. Um, so we'll use this. Now we can go back to any time. Oh, also this is really nice. I like this boat. Yeah. Uh, Airtable. Um, so base ID would be in here. And table, I think it was called table one with a capital T. So let it be. So uh, here, add all fields because in workflow, we just have two data points coming in, which correspond perfectly to the table. We can let it be. Otherwise, you can select like, oh, just add these three things amongst. Uh, oh, what is that's quite on. neat. Yeah. So yeah. I could just leave out the set node and specify which fields I want in here, right? Um, not in this case, because the Telegram um, actually probably can. Um, not not hundred percent sure, but uh, since the workflow data the Telegram sends overrides the Mindy nodes workflow data, still need a set node to sort of filter out the data that we want, um, because uh, the Telegram node, as we saw, isn't sending data like amount and so on. Um, but yeah, like you could have many different values coming through set node, but maybe you just still want to add name and amount. Uh, that's possible. OK. Cool. So we can click on execute node. And perfect. It seems like it has added the data. And we can check it in the air table. Huh. So it seems that it's empty. Um, let's take Yes, because the fields are empty in here. Ha, huh, OK. So maybe execute the whole thing again? Yeah, let's try that. Uh, ah, that's why. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, if you open the set node. Ah, OK, so it seems like we refreshed this window somehow. So it doesn't have any data in it, the workflow. So we need to run this again. Oh, no, you don't need to remove this. No, no, so no, no, no. Uh, this is fine. It's fine because okay. it's, there's no data. So we just click on the cross button, uh, click on execute workflow at the bottom. Yes. Um, and we need to send it an image now. Um, should I do it? Uh, I can do it. OK. So we're going to do the same one. Okay, so we got the message here, perfect. And now we can look into a table. I um, like the actually table, yeah. but this time we have the fields yes. in there. So perfect. Uh, that's and yes, there we go. And it actually did um, add the data the first time around because we have an empty yeah. record in there, so it did work. Perfect. Should we try once more? Uh, I can try sending so it would be a different name this time. Definitely. Uh, cool. So we have to click on the execute. OK, so let's do it differently this time. Um, let's go back to the workflow. Uh, we can click on uh, the cross button. So we can say, like, hey, our bot is ready. Um, we have tested it. It works. But now we don't want to click on execute workflow naturally every time. Uh, we want to parse something. So this is ready for production. So what we do is click on the active button on the top right. Yes, uh, activate and save. So now what would happen is now we can keep sending data to it, and it will keep parsing it and adding it to the air table without 
And like you can even close the window as long as the edit and instance is running. You can close the editor UI. Uh, you can keep sending it data, and it will keep working. So now this workflow is in production. However, the data that's now going to be passing through this whole workflow is not going to be visible in the editor UI because it's in production. Um, so yeah. So when you say production, yeah, actually, let's just run this, and I'm going to come back with the questions. Uh, so I also just right now sent a, a receipt. So you can send one too. So we should probably have two more records after you send one more. Yes, uh, Telegram. And I have this bot. So that was another receipt. OK, the Telegram node ran, gave you pass information, and um, I, I hope it's true. I can see the receipt. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at your table. Yes. Wonderful. There we so go. I sent one. There's information. There's the second one that you sent. Perfect. We have now a Telegram bot. We didn't write any code. So basically, we can use it to take pictures of receipts and throw the receipts away and have like all the expenses in a centralized place. We uh, can also use more like no code tools around this, like. Uh, I know, like Retool, maybe Bravo Studio, if you want to construct an app out of it. And it then can sort of power the back end of this whole process and give you data integrated with different sources and so on. Yeah, that was definitely an easy and friendly process. So thank you for that. Um, so you mentioned this is ready for production. Yes. By my understanding, currently, I'm running it locally, and I have a tunnel running. So when I'm going into production, how would I go about that? Um, so this is uh, ready for production, which means, like, of course, your laptop and the init and process in the terminal would have to keep running for this workflow to keep running. Uh, you can close the editor UI if you want. That's fine. Uh, but the init and process needs to keep running. So you can go about it multiple ways. Uh, e either you shift it to a server. Um, and like we have uh, documentation on how to do that. So you can use Docker. Uh, it's rather straightforward as well. Or uh, you could use something like Init and Cloud if you don't want to maintain your own instance um, so that it keeps running there and you don't have the headache of maintaining a server and Init and Instance as well. Great. I'm going to quickly look for the Init and Cloud link. If you have it in mind, then uh, feel free to just drop it in there. I do that. Oh, and it on that cloud. Yes, that's him. Mm -hmm. Just in case. I find that people are usually interested in hosted versions. So there you have it. All right. Look at that. Perfect. My first fully fledged and Ethan integration. And we use their table as well, which is kind of nice because next time I'm also looking at their table again. So <laughs> I feel like I prepared a little. It's awesome. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. Thank you. This was fun. Definitely. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to show me or uh, something that you would like to share um, something you would like to highlight anything really um nothing specifically in mind just like uh i think like no code tools and like looking at an it and changed a lot for me in terms of um understanding the significance of some tools like this like for sure we could go about like creating a script in python or so on to handle these kind of things but uh this whole ecosystem of uh visual connections makes it really easy to sort of rapidly iterate over things, automating your internal processes. Um, another neat feature is like uh, if you click on a node, um, you can rename it. So if you look at a lot of our tutorials that we have on the website, uh, you know, you'd see uh, this something like receive image from Telegram, uh, set data, or like uh, Mindy would be renamed to parse details out of receipt and so on. So that helps it even more to become a visual process. So if you copy and paste this JSON and send it over to somebody else, they paste it into the editor UI and they're like, huh, OK, 
this gets data, this does this. So have a broad understanding of what the workflow is doing. So it's rather easy to explain it. Like it's almost like having code with comments written in build. So, you know, uh, that's always uh, great to see as well. And like, if you're planning to get started with any 10, um, come to the website. Uh, if you have, uh, go to the documentation, like we have some good resources there on creating your first workflow. And if you run into any troubles, uh, come to the communities. Like we're all learners there and uh, we have a very friendly and active community. And yeah, uh, looking forward to seeing uh, some new folks there as well. Definitely, so make sure you check out the docs. I really like this. Um, well, I just clicked through to your regular docs, but I really did appreciate the quick information about each APIs what you, what I need, how to get started, as opposed to going through pages of documentation. So um, that was a really good one. And yes, I really enjoyed playing with your um, platform. Hopefully, I can build something uh, less for play, more for productivity in the future. Actually, we are having hack days as well in December. <laughs> so awesome. looking forward to that. Um, and I think we can wrap it up right now, if you are OK with that. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this was fun. Hopefully, we can have you back again sometime. Uh, definitely looking forward to finding out more about that um, automation process about creating images. That would be so helpful. So. If anyone in the chat has any more questions, this is the last call. In the meantime, if anyone wanted to use a Vonage coupon code, uh, we have a new one for this month. That is the December code. Now you can take your screenshot. And uh, you can find Tanai on Twitter. Uh, under his uh, well image video, uh, that would be his username. And yes, looks like no questions today. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Thanks so much, Tanay again, um, and see you all next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.